is Channel 3, KYW-TV, Philadelphia. Independence Mall and throughout the Delaware Valley, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News Nightcast. Good evening, I'm Beverly Williams. And I'm Steve Bell. Iraq now faces a January 15th deadline to pull its forces out of Kuwait or risk possible attack. In what President Bush called a powerful message, the United Nations Security Council signed a blank check today on the end of a gun barrel. It's a resolution authorizing military force against Iraq. The importance of the vote was evident with foreign ministers present from 13 of the 15 nations on the Security Council. Secretary of State Baker headed the U.S. delegation and lobbied hard for passage. When the dramatic moment came, the U.S. was joined by the Soviet Union, Britain, France, and eight other nations in voting yes. Cuba and Yemen voted no, China abstained. Iraq's ambassador denounced the resolution as an American imperialist move. If war is imposed upon us by the United States, this will be our destiny. In Baghdad, Saddam Hussein said he's not afraid of fighting, and he mockingly dismissed the U.S. as overly influenced by Rambo movies. At Seton Hall University in New Jersey, Vice President Quayle warned against delaying too long in forcing Iraq out of Kuwait. The more time that Saddam Hussein has, to tighten his grip on Kuwait. And the harder it may be to break that grip if and when war comes. But in Washington, the Senate Armed Services Committee heard more words of caution today from former military leaders, most warned against going to war too soon or without formal approval from Congress. And many senators agreed. We need a special session so the Congress can authorize the president to follow the foreign policy the United Nations has voted today. That UN vote means a great deal to a National Guard unit in Philadelphia. The 121st Transportation Company was activated for Persian Gulf duty. We've been following them this week as they prepare to ship out Sunday for special training. Channel 3's Joyce Evans was at the unit's headquarters tonight as they got their marching orders. A direction of the president. Major John Kane read the order tonight, placing the last of his 62 National Guardsmen on active duty. Please sign here. Every one of them signed the order, but are they really ready? No, I'm not ready. I'm scared. So now I get to show off the expertise I developed in my time in the military. Spirits really shifted into high gear at supper, the mess hall buzzing with friendly conversation and some clowning around but you could almost hear a pin drop when news of the U.N. vote flashed up on TV. Now, if President Bush decides to go to war against Iraq, he has the official blessing of the United Nations. That scare you? Oh, yes, it does. A lot. Private Tawanya Newell, her parents' only child, joined the Guard just a year and a half ago. She thought as an occasional weekend warrior. You gotta go, you gotta go over here. I just want to come back home, that's all. Sergeant Al Peterson, a 16-year reservist, is leaving a wife and three kids. I think they have it harder than we do because we'll know where we are and we'll know what we're doing. They won't know where we are or what's happening to us. After dinner, last-minute packing, gas masks, gun racks, and lollipops donated by a local hospital. We start off at 7.31. We want that other truck out here by 7.30. Sergeant Leonard Bates issued orders for the weekend, last minute items before they head out for intensive training at Fort Indian Town Gap near Lebanon, PA. The troops will try to finish loading up these trucks tomorrow night, so they may take off early Saturday to spend some extra precious moments with their loved ones for the last time in what may be a very long time. In Northeast Philadelphia, Joyce Evans, Eyewitness News, Nightcast. A warning tonight that AIDS is spreading at alarming rates among heterosexual women. The World Health Organization says AIDS is spreading worldwide because women don't suspect they can get the disease from heterosexual contact. And the Centers for Disease Control estimates that by next year, AIDS will be the fifth leading cause of death among American women of childbearing age. The CDC report projects that more than 15,000 American women will have AIDS by next year. Most will be between the ages of 15 and 44. Cancer remains the number one killer among women in that age group. 
A murder mystery tonight in a small South Jersey community. A young woman and her brother were found beaten and stabbed inside of their Willingboro home this morning. 26-year-old Selena Lewis died of her wounds. 30-year-old Andre Lewis was left in critical condition. Investigators say that there were signs of a struggle inside of the house, but it doesn't appear to be a forced entry. And police in Delaware want to know who fired two shotgun blasts at a school bus this afternoon. It happened in Newcastle, Delaware, near routes 40 and 13. The driver was the only one aboard. She was not hurt. The bus was on its way to pick up children from a nearby Head Start program. New revelations in the gravel truck accident that took the life of a little boy this week in Delaware County. Federal and state investigators took a close look at the truck. It overturned Monday on Route 202. Their possible focus, problems we showed you earlier this week. Things like tires with no tread and a wheel missing part of a brake shoe. The truck driver was not available for comment, but truck owner Milton Roy had this to say. That truck didn't have a bad town. It had new brakes put on it. It had new drums put on it. At least three tires I saw had no cord on them. One looked like it was ready to burst open. I don't see the truck sometimes for a day or two. Roy showed us receipts for maintenance work on the truck. He says he's upset about reports he did not maintain the truck, but he's more upset, he says, by the death of a young child. It was a battle for dollars tonight in the Republican race for mayor of Philadelphia, and the contestants were former mayor Frank Rizzo, who has not yet officially announced, and Sam Katz, a relative unknown, who has. As our Jerry Penicoli reports, they staged fundraisers tonight only blocks from each other. Mr. Murray, nice to see you, sir. Frank Rizzo pressing the flesh in fine form at the private and crowded Vesper Club in Center City. It cost five ahead to get in. That's 5,000, and he hasn't even formally announced yet. The piano player hammered out pennies from heaven a few blocks away at the ritzy Bellevue where it cost more than pennies to greet virtual unknown mayoral candidate Sam Katz. These people paid a thousand bucks a head. Rizzo, the old guard, Katz, the young upstart, dueling for dollars. Rizzo had a heavyweight, smoking Joe Frazier. While Katz, a financial expert, had heavy hitters, business people and lawyers. He also had people who had no idea who he was. So what are you doing here if you didn't know who he was five minutes ago? <laughs> no, to the Zoe. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I'm here because we were asked to come here. There were dueling checks and dueling money totals. We met our goal tonight of $250,000. $225,000. This was uh, planned, obviously, to show the people of Philadelphia and any other candidates that are thinking about it that the Katz campaign and Sam Katz is a serious candidate, and we intend to be in this fight.